uh, a week later, uh, Jim Olson did the same thing to another seventh grader. And I just pushed a seventh grader around and laughed at the kid because he was bigger. And that got me really angry. So instead of after school this time, it was during PE class uh, at the track and field uh, courts at Park Pros. I confronted them, and that was that. And then uh, Rich Mantifo, uh, it was me and my friends, we were just hanging out uh, after during recess and lunch, and uh, you know, we were just walking through the, the area, and he, would, he made some, some derogatory statements about Asian people. He said, the usual, ching chong, ching chong, ching chong. <laughs> and that got me really angry. So about five minutes later, I met him on the, the tennis courts. I cornered him, and that was that. Now, like, so, most of you guys didn't know that, did you? You didn't know I got into this trouble. So, and then it came. I was pulled in the office for what I did. You know, the principal knew. And he, I got three days suspension in school. Mr. Norby, who was the principal at the time, asked me, you know, did I know Kung Fu? <laughs> you know, he was trying to see if I knew what I was doing because he was probably going to give me more, give me in trouble if I did say I knew Kung Fu. And I didn't know Kung Fu. Um, I wasn't ashamed that I got, I wasn't too ashamed that I got suspended. <coughs> Uh, it did suck though, you know. In three days suspension, you're sitting in a corner and you have nothing to look at besides a wall. It's terrible. I hated it. Especially as an eighth grade boy, it was terrible. What came worse though was a phone call home. <laughs> My dad was notified and I was in big trouble. When I got home, he had the look on his face. He sat me down and I was scared. I was about to ask my daddy if he knew Kung Fu. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't. However, he possessed a more damaging art, the art of speaking the truth. He sat with me and told me how disappointed he was and how my actions were not evident of the teachings of Jesus. He told me that my ability to fight and beat someone up was the worst of my qualities. Because it would lead me down the wrong path, the path away from God. I couldn't beat up every problem that came my way. He was right. As much as this, these guys deserve it, t teaching them with the fist wasn't going to change anything. More often than not, I would be the one who would get in trouble and face the penalties. Uh, worst of all, I let my father down. I could see his concern and disappointment. At that moment, I didn't love, live up to his love and expectation. That's when I realized that what it meant to be a good boy. My family, my community, you here, expected much more from me. You, you have your hopes in me that I will be someone. My mom worked two full-time jobs so I could succeed. She believed in me. My parents couldn't help me with my homework. They couldn't read bedtime stories, uh, but they did believe and support me. And I always had the confidence in me that I would do the right thing in school and in life and throughout my journey with God. I had failed. And that was a hard bullet to swallow. I thought to myself, what could I do? What must I do to redeem myself to gain the confidence back from my dad, my mom, and obviously with integrity, live up to the faith that my family and the many here today had, had in me. Going to high school didn't make it any easier. In a short time span, I lost two uncles. Uh, one, of, one of my uncles to a tragic fishing accident in Astoria, and then another uncle in North Portland due to a robber. Uh, then due to the confusion of being a young teenage teenager,